Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Whenever you're listening to this, this is the second episode of this podcast, I guess. Surprisingly, I have committed to doing this the second time. I am also gooped and gagged by my behavior. And yes, I record this in the morning. And today, I just want to talk about how I have been ravenously, bloodthirsty, hungry, insatiable hunger for the past, I think, week. Yeah, past week. Definitely. I don't know why. I've been eating the same amount of foods, doing the same amount of activity, I guess, like, I don't know how to say that, but like when I'm working in the barbershop, it's like the same amount of like standing up, doing things, shadowing, so on and so forth. So I don't know where this hunger came about. Somebody tell me why. Maybe I'm growing old or something. Or am I like building muscles? But I've been doing the same exercise or like even lesser reps than before. So I really don't know what was the reason to this hunger. I don't know if anybody have been through this. But like I know that there's certain periods of time that I get super hungry like that. Is it the testosterone? I don't think so. Why is it like in various periods of time it doesn't make sense also i have good news and bad news bad news is i am no longer working in a barber shop and i am unemployed right now i think the decision was definitely hard to make to resign i i guess you can call it a resignation i don't know what to call it i don't have other words to call it because i'm I don't know if I'm an employee, I didn't sign a contract that I am, and I don't know. I'm in the training training phase, training apprentice, apprentice phase, whatever you call that, right? And I just, because like my eyes have always been a problem. Remember last episode, I definitely have mentioned it before. It's like a recurrent corneal erosion. It's a ticking time bomb. Like for years, I've been looking at Reddit pages, reading them uh, under the subreddit called Dry Eyes or something. Or like, I don't know, maybe other reddits as well. And watching multiple YouTube videos on, on recurrent corneal erosion. And like, they keep saying that the computer screen is the devil, like, we shouldn't be using, we shouldn't be looking at computer screen, it will make our eyes even drier, and then you will happen to have recurrent cornea erosion more frequent. So, I also think that it was the devil with that in mind, so hence, I try to find another skill and another job that isn't office job. So I end up with barbering and then turns out it got even worse. I can feel the dry eyes when I was working in office job like during internship or part time. It didn't have that much um, that strenuous like dry like I didn't feel that my eyes were dry. But this time around, I definitely feel my eyes were super dry and this time around, I have been frequently putting eye drops like routinely. And at that time, I sometimes I put eye drops, sometimes I don't. So it's, it, it, I don't have a routine. I don't have a time intervals to when I apply my eye drops. So definitely I feel the effects of working there. And I think my eyes were strained even more than office job which is kind of like surprising because who who would have thought who would have thought 
Even Reddit calls like computer screens the devil. So, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So I have to resign. Like, I was I was there for like a month, a month. Yeah, a month and almost one point five months, but not haven't reached the point five mark. I think. Uh, yeah. Sad. Definitely sad. Um, and then yeah, I don't want to speak so much about like the contract wise, cause I I feel like I was fucked over, so or something, or they're trying to fuck me over, cause I the training is three to six months, and I've only been there for one month and like maybe one week, and they're trying to get get money from me. The training was mandatory before hiring, so that one, this like so-called training, ugh, I don't know. I just don't want to talk about it. Um, it's just painful financially for me. I don't know. I think it's unfair, unjust, for me to pay them that much money if like I. I'm not working there, or not. Like, let's say if there's a non-competent, whatever you call that, non-competent agreement with. I think it's called that, right? The term. If I were to use this training and work in other barber shops, and that 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 like, okay, but I haven't even completed the training. I haven't completed anything. I. Like to be to be like so called like a、uh, actual barber, which is like it's 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 kind of fucked if you think about it. Like I have to go through this training in order to be hired, but I already have a prerequisite in barber training certified, accredited by the UK. But I have to go through the similar training in order to work、uh, at the at the job. Editor Jacob here. I would like to also add. On top of that, um, they didn't even give me a goal, or、uh, itemized modules of what what was met or what have I achieved, and they don't even really teach you anything. They just say, "Oh, you're shadowing. You're just looking at the stuff." I don't call shadowing training. I don't call. Looking at how things are done, training. If that were training, that means I've been watching YouTube my entire life, learning to bake, and that is training. Like, think about it; it doesn't make sense. And then the contract doesn't make sense because, like, the different clauses in different like sections are so、uh, vague, and it's not like consistent at all. So, you know, I don't know. Anyways, yeah, it's 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 kind of fucked. And 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 I wasn't like, I wasn't paid well, and on top of that, I typically use those like allowances, the the menial allowances that they give. I save up to pay for my eye drops, my medical bills, my other medical bills that I haven't really finished、um, paying up.、Uh, eye drops, eye gels. Yeah, it's it's just like a lot. I feel, and then like on top of that, like I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't talk so much about it anymore. I think that's enough sharing for this part. I it kind of like put me in a more like I fucking hate this industry. I think.、Uh, thank God I I had experience in like. Learning business law, and having a linguistics degree, to f- fully understand like certain terms that it was so vague, and stuff. I don't think it 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 has any grounds to stand. If 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 something were to happen to me, and then on top of that, like recently, my mom ha、uh, got have gotten news that she got um she tested positive for. Sending her fecal matter for,、uh, to test for cancer. I think it's colon cancer, if I'm not wrong. 
with the fecal test so she have to do another test to really confirm that if she really has cancer which is like bugging me and i have i have to i have to accompany her and stuff and if if really if really she she really had cancer and then i feel like i do do not have enough time with her and and because like the six day work week was so demanding and I, I couldn't spend any any time with her if something would happen or like and 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 she would be like she would not be working as frequent and and the financial situation would be even worse than right now yeah that is so much so many to consider that's why I resign I I'm so scared that uh, I lose my mom and and I don't have time to to help her out like if if she were to go to uh appointments chemo appointments especially like you can see from like vlogs uh from Hank Green uh Grace Helbig right now uh, about uh, like cancer cancer and chemo vlogs and another girl called Lisa I don't know her last name cuz like her last name is kind of hard but she did she do uh she did reviews on 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 wings club before yeah i follow her i subscribe to her because of wings club not because i'm a fan of wings club but i did a uh, honest thesis like partly about wings club just to get a background and and other than watching watching the show in order to write my thesis is about it's about it's about um, um, um what's it called something to do with phonology phonetics and phonology yeah so i have to like do background so i i think the 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 thing she did was so interesting she reviewed like uh the different seasons or i think the different um countries um countries i think i don't know like the any oh animated studios like differences in like the way they dress uh the the winx members kind of interesting and then now she's like doing movie reviews with a friend where she sends her her friend's face with an emoji or whatever it's kind of fun she uh she did a review on I think bottoms the latest movie the 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 lesbians be funny it's 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 a pretty good lesbian comedy movie pretty realistic kind of comedy it's not like uh stupid like making teenagers look stupid and stuff like it's pretty it's pretty real kind of like teenager how teenager go through life i don't know how they write that it's not like cringy teenager uh high school life it's comedy it's kind of campy and it's basically the lore of Nicholas Galitzine. Galitzine? Is it? Yeah, he's been in Purple Hearts. He's been in Bottoms. He's been in the Red, Red White and Royal Blue. Crazy range of movies he's been in. It's kind of funny that they also try to go through like the different movies he's been in. The range, man. The range. So, yeah, I think that's that's about it for this. These topics. I won't go through what happened yesterday. Yesterday was the last day, but it's also the day that I finally get to meet my polytechnic friends after a while. It's been it's been months. Uh, some one of them has like been like probably one year. Um, we ate at uh, Crystal Jade, uh, one of the Crystal Jade restaurant. Let me go Google. It's Crystal Jade Lamy and Xiao Long Bao. Uh, I try. Uh, I it's interesting. I try. Uh, yeah, I reached that kind of later than everybody else because. Um, um, the the uh, the working hours for a barber shop is definitely longer than other office jobs. 
So yeah, I tried their new plant-based menu. Pretty fun. Okay, so what did I try? I tried the Impossible Mapo Dofu. I tried the Impossible Sheng Jian Bao, which is a pork bun. Uh, it's like a pork bun, but then they put in like this, like iron, iron, cast iron or iron skillet. I don't know how to call that. And then they put water and then they steam and, and pan fry the, the bottom of the bao. I have, I always have like high expectations for Sheng Jian Bao because that's one of my favorite baos. It's it's way above Xiaolong Bao's. So, yep. If you have to do Sheng Jian Bao, you better do Sheng Jian Bao right. Don't do it like that 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 Lotus Cafe one that Sheng Jian Bao. They didn't even really pan fry the bottom, and then the ratio of the the bao. With the, 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 the feelings is like off in Lotus Cafe or Lotus Vegetarian Restaurant, whatever you call that. It's, it's, it's that enterprise, okay? And then the bottom is not pan fried for Lotus Cafe. It's, it's, they put um, sesame seeds at the bottom. And then, so the crunch is definitely different from regular Sheng Jian Bao, which I've eaten before I was vegan. I mean, now I'm flexitarian, so technically I can um, go for regular Sheng Jian Bao if I wanted to, but I want to try the vegan version. The, I mean, the plant-based version of Sheng Jian Bao. I don't know whether it's actually vegan, though. I haven't really, really looked at the menu or checked, whatever. But yeah, Sheng Jian Bao, high hopes. And then I also tried the Impossible Bakute Xiaolong Bao. And then I also tried this like small bowl dan dan la mian, uh, with impossible meat inside. And then I tried the ripping pancake. So these are the dishes that I've tried. Let me give you some up review. Sorry, this restaurant isn't halal. Yeah, so sorry to my halal friends. Uh, I mean, if, if you're not that strict uh, with like Hala certified things. As long as it, it doesn't, it's not pork, and you, and you can eat it. I think go for it, whatever. Um, but it's just that I know that hala to be hala certified, you your your cut cutleries, your kitchen uh tables, appliances, all have shouldn't be touched by pork and should be blessed or something like like the Jewish kind of like I don't know. From what I've heard, I don't know what's it called, but like to be kosher or whatever, something has to be blessed or yeah, something like that. So the impossible mapo tofu, actually, I didn't really, I haven't eaten the like the real mapo tofu that isn't like vegan. I only tried one vegan mapo tofu in my life, and then this is the second one. Second mapo tofu I've ever had. Uh, I think the taste is good. Uh, if you're into like more thicker, saucier stuff, and you're okay with tofu with uh, minced meat, which the impossible meat is there to do, uh, go for it. Uh, I would say that the thicker sauce is star like the starchier kind of sauce. If you're not into starchy sauce, don't buy it. But overall, the flavor, the flavor is flavoring. I think it does give the ac essence of mapo tofu. But from what I know, mapo tofu is supposed to be spicy. But this is not spicy at all. So I'm kind. I don't know. And I think I remember there's mushrooms in in the 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 dish as well, which pretty it really gives you the umami flavor. Thank you, mushrooms, for providing the umami flavors. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not too mushroom forward. It's still like the sauce forward, the mapo tofu sauce forward. But I don't know, it's, it's not spicy enough to be considered as mapo tofu in my eyes. But the flavor is good. Uh, Rec I recommend that. Highly recommend. No, but yeah, it's it's not bad. And then next, ooh, you know, it's the impossible Sheng Jian Bao, the pan fried bao. 
Oh, I have so much to say. My hopes, my expectations were low. I didn't expect my friends to order it, but they did order it, so I got one. About to try, to test, to taste test. Um, oh, this hits the mark of Sheng Jian Bao. After my shit experience with Lotus Cafe's um Sheng Jian Bao, the the feeling and the bao ratio was just nice. It's not too thick like regular bao. Regular bao is always like very f- a lot of like the bread, the bao bread. I call it the bread. Let's call it bread, okay? To differentiate. So the bread is it's not too thick here. It's not too thin. It's just nice. The feeling just nice. The ratio, everything so good. And then there is like juiciness in that Sheng Jian Bao, which is what I am always looking for. I am not looking for dry as fuck Sheng Jian Bao like in Lotus Cafe. Sorry, sorry. I have to. I have to call Lotus Cafe or Lotus Vegetarian out because like that is not a Sheng Jian Bao. Sheng Jian Bao has to be a bit like saucy, a bit like soupy. If you if you like, if they have the option of like the soupiness, like the feelings. Are just ratioed right, and then the crunch at the bottom, that is what I call pan fried crust. The crust, so good, so good, amazing. I didn't, I didn't expect it to be like good, cause like it's like, they they put like a green. Colored, it's a green colored kind of bao, so I wasn't expecting it. I also didn't like even look at the bottom whether it's like actually pan fried, but yeah, it's kind of pan fried, but it's not as dark as like regular pan fried baos, regular pan fried shenjia bao, right? It's not as like caramel color. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, but it still it still hits it like the cr- the crispiness, the crunch of the of the of the crust. It's just nice. It's ooh, let me. Uh, it's like. Trying to, I'm trying to give people what they want. How to describe Sheng Jian Bao crust? How it should be like? It should be a bit like a pizza crust. Kind of think, think, kind of thing. What the fuck am I thinking? Oh, my words are mixed up. Anyways, the crust should be like, cr- like crunchy. It's not crispy. It's kind of like that crunch. When you bite into like a good pizza crust kind of crunch, yeah, that is what you're supposed to expect. And then you shouldn't expect it to be like have this like middle layer. You know when bread, right? There's a middle layer. Layer. It shouldn't be of like a weird chewy consistency. It should be just nice. It's not too chewy. Like this, like random chewy texture, which is like gummy. It shouldn't be gummy. Which I think a lot of pizza crust accidentally becomes. They don't have that gummy, gummy, bread feeling to the texture. That's why it's good. And then the the sauce or the like the soup or the marinade something about the impossible meat or the feeling, just nice. It hit the spot. Is it's savory? It's good. It's. Meaty. I would like not the texture. The texture is like impossible meat. Is it wouldn't be that meaty, but meaty enough for people who don't like meat, who are vegan and like trying to satisfy something, the meat satisfaction. I think impossible meat still fulfills that. That as compared to Beyond Meat. Sorry, Beyond Meat. Ugh. <laughs> but Beyond Sausage is good though. I'm mean, just. Like not a lot of people use Beyond Meats in Singapore. I think most people use Impossible Meats in Singapore. I don't know why. What is the contract? What is the deal with the brand? But like, yeah, Sheng Jia Bao highly, highly recommend. If you if you go to the this restaurant, Crystal Jade, uh, La Mian Xiao Long Bao, right? Order that. It's a new menu item. Order that so it stays on the menu. Uh, what's the next thing? Impossible bakute xiao long bao, so soup dumpling, right? Xiao long bao is soup dumpling, so it's cute. It it comes in like the regular the dim sum like the xiao long bao um, what's it called? Longzi, 
I don't know what is it called in English, but like you know the bamboo thing, the bamboo steamer, right? Looks good. Looks it looks good, but does it taste good? Personally, I'm not a fan of bakute soups, so I don't know why they chose to use bakute as their soup um thing, as their soup base for the xiaolong bao. So first of all, is it bakute? So it's not the the from from what I tasted, it's not the Singapore kind of bakute with where where it's like. Uh, pepper, pepper forward. Singapore bakutes are pepper forwards, like white pepper forward. It's not that. Um, so is it Malaysian bakute, where it's like more, uh, herby forward, like uh Chinese medicine, Chinese herb forward, like tea. Kind of and kind of not, like, I mean it's more like the vegetarian. Bakute type, but but those have like variations as well, but it's not like too medicine-y Like you won't feel like the yao cai wei hen zhong. How do you say, like the 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 Chinese herbs? Like it's not as strong. It's not a uh, Chinese herb forward, right? I would say it's more like more mushroomy. The taste is more mushroom forward than than bakute, but. If you told me it's bakute, yeah, it passed as like a vegetarian, plant based kind of bakute. But is it the bakute that we know from Singapore and Malaysia? Um, it's like middle, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, but it's still good. It still stands on it. Its own as like a xiaolong bao. It does satisfy the cravings of xiaolong bao, I guess, because like there's not much places that do soup dumpling xiaolong bao, uh, in like plant based, or vegetarian vegan type of xiaolong bao. They normally do like dumplings, vegetarian vegan dumplings, plant based dumplings. They never, never ever do xiaolong baos, at all. Which is, which I've been trying. I've been like thinking, imagining, uh, for quite a while to make my own xiaolong bao. But I guess I don't need to do that anymore. So they sell it, but hopefully it stays in the menu for quite a long time. Next item that I've tried is the, it's a really small bowl. It's a tan tan ramen with impossible meat. So. Yeah, the meat. Uh, um, I don't know something about the uh, impossible meat. I do not feel the texture. Maybe, um, I would recommend that to get the impossible meat to have texture, you have to like kind of like stir fry it first. If it's like a soupy, it's kind of like saucy. Then you won't get the impossible meat. Like you won't get the meaty texture. From the impossible meat, so you know that's a that's a advice. Even if you cook impossible meat at home, right? So for me, I'm not like very. Uh, I don't really eat like northern Chinese cuisines as much. So this one. They definitely have the Sichuan pepper, the Sichuan peppers in, cause I can feel the a bit of the mala, like the numbing numbing sensations, but. And it's spicy. It's like surprisingly spicier than I thought. Even though I don't think they put in the menu that it is spicy, I didn't see that. I just saw lamian, so I just order it. Cause it's noodles. Ramen, some may call it. Ah,、uh, yeah. Um. So the taste. Ah,、uh, I do not recommend it. But I think if you like mala kind of stuff, definitely go for it. Um, tada ramen. Love the texture. I love the noodle. 
the noodle is noodling. It's not. It's like what Chinese say. The QQ texture, like the bounciness of the, the. It's not too. It's not soggy. It's not like. It's not like the the Western kind of like pasta al dente, but it's like bouncy. You know, fulfill the texture cravings if you're into lamian. It hits the spot. It's not like uh, what's it called? Uh, ban mian that kind of texture. Ban mian texture is kind of like soggy a bit. It's a bit soggy. It's not as bouncy. It's not as QQ as they would call it. Love the noodle texture. Not a fan of the sauce. I think I saw like mei cai inside. I don't know, but I didn't really like taste it like individually. So I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. Next is a dessert. Why do I sound Spanish? Hispanic. The dessert. Yeah, I can't. I can't get away with that pronunciation. Sorry. The dessert is a ribbon pancake. So the ribbon pancake. I personally, I haven't tried other ribbon pancakes in my life, especially like the northern Chinese version. So it's like. It's like a bit fried, I guess. It's I don't know.、Mm, personally, also not a big fan of red bean, but I'm pretty indifferent right now. But when I was a kid, I hate red bean. I hate it. Green bean soup, like green bean soup, as in the 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 sweet one, the dessert, not the not the like green bean soup, like black beans and pinto beans or whatever bean kind of soup, like. In Italian or like whatever, not that kind of broad bean or whatever, but like, yeah, not a fan of like red bean pastries as well. So, so I'm just gonna give it a try. I had a slice, a piece. One might say it's not a slice. Um, a piece of it. Um, it didn't red bean enough. Like, normally you get that red bean kind of like smell. The te- there's no texture integrity in the red bean anymore. But normally, like if you eat red bean pastries or red bean dessert items where there's a red bean feeling, you have this like denser like mouth feel to it. Like when you bite into it, you're supposed to have like this this dense mouth feel when you like chew it. In like it's a bit like. Like 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 like, bit of like mochi, but not really like not as like dense as mochi kind of feeling, when you bite into it, but it's supposed to have like okay maybe like when you bite into uh those like, scoops of ice creams, like that kind is supposed to have a but softer than those kind of feet like in your mouth, in from your teeth when you bite into it it's supposed to have like a bit of like that. The kind of ice cream scoop texture, but softer. This one totally don't have the structure integrity of the red bean. No, it's totally mashed, mashed, and I don't know. And the taste. Let me talk about the taste. The taste. I get um, as I said, it's not red beaning, so there's no red、like, the red bean aroma, like the nice red bean aroma. Don't have that. It's more sugar forward. It's a lot of sugar. I can just taste the sugar in it. So, the feelings, the red bean feelings, is not feeling me.、Uh. Okay. Next is the pancake in itself, right? The outer exterior. Um, when I talk about gummy feeling that I hate in breads and stuff, this they have that gummy feeling. The gummy texture. Hated it. I don't like it. There's no, there's no crispy crunch, like the how do you say, like the su su cui gan. It's like it's not like you know su 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 the 感觉 is like su cui. It's like when you bite into like those like Chinese pastry, the flaky, the flaky pastries or like croissants or croissant, as they say, like. Don't have that flaky feeling. I was expecting it to be flaky for some reason, cause it's a it's a pancake, but instead I got a gummy, gummy interior. Like 
you know, supposedly it should be like crispy on the outside and like soft, soft on the inside as a pancake, like a bit like crepe, but not really. But this one gave me the gummy texture like in pizzas, you know, when it's too thick and it's not cooked properly and you have that gummy texture. So do not recommend at all. Yeah, I did not order any drinks because I hardly order drinks in restaurants or whatever establishment, food establishments in general. I'm not a beverage kind of person. I typically just drink water. But when it comes to beverage, I need to be like, I have like go-tos for maybe bubble teas and stuff. I have like specific flavor, specific shops I would go to. Ooh, cars. Sorry. Noisy. Yeah, so I typically don't order anything, but like my friend order milk teas and soybean, which I don't know. Why are you ordering milk tea from a northern Chinese cuisine restaurant kind of thing? Milk tea, I would order milk tea if it's a Hong Kong restaurant, Taiwanese restaurant, uh, Thai restaurant. I would order milk tea. Or bubble tea in general. Bubble tea shops in general. I will order milk tea. Other than that, I wouldn't go out of my way to drink milk teas. And then my other friend uh, ordered soybean. Which I guess is soybean milk. Soybean milk, I'm kind of like... It's a, it depends on my, 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 my mood. So, yeah. I don't even... I didn't even attempt to look at the... the the drinks menu so you know i don't even know what what is available anyways so i cannot i cannot talk much about the beverages that they have whether it's too sweet or whatever yeah but that is my overall review on the food was i satisfied yes the sheng jian bao whoa whoa incredible but the rest i don't know xiao long bao I guess the xiaolongbao and the mapo tofu is like second in terms of plant-based dishes that they have. It's second for me. First is definitely the sheng jian bao. Highest rated sheng jian bao above all else. Sheng jian bao. So I guess the episode is kind of over. But before we end things off, I would like to recommend some songs. So recently Taylor Swift released finally released her 1989 album taylor's version that's my favorite uh taylor album so i bought i bought it i have the physical copy of like the previous the non-taylor version but it's physical copy so can't get money out of me anymore from streaming yeah i've been listening to the whole album Still, I still like it a lot, and there is definitely a different like musical, uh, I don't know, like a production difference in it. Like some instruments were uh, sounded a bit different from what I remembered, and then next one is Victoria Monet, singer, songwriter, dancer, songwriter on on I think Dangerous Woman. She contributed a lot on. Ariana Grande's Dangerous Woman album, if I'm not wrong, if I remember correctly. One of my favorite songs on her recent album, Jaguar 2nd, Jaguar 2, I don't know how you call it, Jaguar 2nd, I guess. Uh, favorite song right now from her is On My Mama. That is like a confidence boost if you need it. It's giving... Oh... Should we mention Lizzo? I don't know what's going on right now. I didn't I didn't um catch up with the Lizzo thing. But yeah. It's very it's I think it's more like a more like a vibey it's more vibey than Lizzo. It's like it makes you feel like the swag, like the cool, you know. It makes you move like more swaggery. Ugh. <laughs> swag is so old. Yeah, but it, it does give you that kind of feeling. Yeah, love it. And then, yeah, I'm still watching Naruto. I'm on like season 20-something for Shippuden. I don't know how you call it. But yeah, I've been watching it for 
weeks now. Very good. Highly recommend. No wonder Naruto is popular. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Fuck. I forgot to mention. Let me add one more thing. We, my friends, were splitting the restaurant expenses. She had a hot, she's the one who paid, right? First. And then she's the one who also do the splitting of expenses and then everything got mixed up. So since I'm not working anymore and today I'm supposed to send out resumes but I haven't started on it. So since I'm the one who's not working, so I I, I volunteered to help her like sort out the splitting of expenses. So I did sort out on a, on a Google Sheets, Excel Sheets or whatever. Just on Google because I don't have the time to open Excel. It's the same anyways. Yeah. And then, yeah. Mystery solved. Let's just say I'm a pro in Excel. Sorry. 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 I'm a pro in Excel. Can always trust in Excel. To, I think, Excel. Anyways. Yeah. Um, surprising, I'm not good at math, but I'm really good at Excel, algebras, anything, but it's just that sometimes I just write the wrong numbers, whatever, formulas is always correct, it's just me right, doing my stupid fat, fat thumb, fat finger syndrome, typing the wrong thing, or like my brain is not working, I copy the wrong numbers, you know, sometimes it'd be like that. Actually, a lot of times when I was in secondary school and primary school, I keep writing the wrong number even though the fucking number is over there. It's just that my formula is correct, everything's correct, it's just that the answer is wrong because I copied the wrong number. So, kind of fucking dumb, if you can say. Yeah, anyways, yeah, I think the episode's over. Hopefully, I'll come back for the third time. And hopefully, I am employed. Hopefully. But I don't think it's that fast. But we can always hope. Bye.